I did see some shit this week where someone was saying Kobe Bryant had five fucking rings. So if he gets one next year, he gets number six, then you have to say that he's on par with Jordan. As far as championships, yes, we can all do math. But as far as him ever eclipsing Michael Jordan, he never will. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you this right now. Not only will he never eclipse Michael Jordan, he's not even fucking close. And I know what all you Laker fans are thinking, but wait a minute, fucker. He's doing the same fucking moves. Yes, he is. Yes, he is. Physically, he can do what Michael Jordan can do. Yes, he can. All right? But this is the difference. Michael Jordan created those fucking moves. All right? You can find a guitarist in your fucking neighborhood who can play voodoo child. Does that mean they're as good as Jimi Hendrix who wrote the fucking song? Who was 20 years ahead of his fucking any other guitarist on the planet? Look, as great as Stevie Ray Vaughan is, I love that guy to death. He can't touch. He can't fucking touch Jimi Hendrix. He can't. Hendrix came up with that shit. And then fucking Stevie Ray modernized it, but it was Jimmy's shit. You know what I mean? It's like a pilot taking learns how to fly and then tries to compare himself to Orville and Wilbur Wright. Oh, they they, they fucking flew only across the field. I'm flying across the whole country. I'm 3,000 miles better than the people who invented flying. All right? Now, Kobe Bryant has the, the I think, has the athletic gifts of Michael Jordan. And if you had the two of them play each other one-on-one at the height of their powers, it would be the greatest one-on-one game ever. All right? But as far as the forward thinking, the 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 athletic genius, Kobe Bryant is not an inventor. He isn't. He does have the drive. He's got all that other shit, but he doesn't have the ability to take the game 20 years into the future where he has no fucking peer. There was no arguments when Jordan played. There was no arguments about who the best guy in the league was for the last 10 years of his career. There was, you know, early on, before he established himself, you know, people, you know, were throwing other names in there. But after, you know, fucking 89, there was no question who the best player was. And by fucking 92, 93, he was without a doubt the greatest basketball player of all time, and he still is. Kobe Bryant, on the other hand, his entire career, there's always been, well, what about this guy? What about that guy? You know? Right now, is he Kobe, LeBron James? You know, I still give it to Kobe. Kobe is still uh, beyond LeBron James, but LeBron James is very close. There was no one near Jordan. I can't even explain it to you. It's like when you talk to those fucking douchebags from the baby boom generation, those selfish cunts who hang their hat on, they stopped the Vietnam War and then became corporate douchebags. Um, That's a big generalization for you. Like they always say, like, no matter how much you get into the Beatles, you just can't wrap your head around what it was like when they put out an album, how far ahead they were from everybody else. It's the same thing with Richard Pryor because what happens is as the years go by, everybody rips those those geniuses off and everybody gets caught up to where the fuck they were. And what usually happens is if you're young, you're watching the contemporary people and then as you go back in time, you go back 30 years, you go all the way back to Pryor and you see him do the black guy, white guy thing and so many people have ripped him off that that the genius of what he does is is a little tainted. You know what I mean? So that's like when people look at Kobe and that and they go back and they look at Jordan, they take for granted what Kobe's doing now because it just seems it just like that's what basketball is now because Jordan showed showed him what was possible. You understand what the fuck I'm saying here? I'm sure Laker fans won't fucking they they'll they'll argue it, but they're fucking morons anyways. They're gonna be like Jordan. Kobe's just as good as Jordan. You know the same way they try to claim that they have fucking sixteen championships, 
or this other douche who wrote me this week who tried to say they have 18. There's such there's just no way to respect a Laker fan. I just cuz so they just transplanted fucking there's, there's so few people from Los Angeles and what happens is people move out there. You know, Hollywood fucking phonies and then the Lakers, you know, they always have some fucking amazing team. They're a hell of they're an awesome franchise. I think they uh they Wait, how many championships they got since 1980? They won 5 8, they won 9. They're better than the Yankees since 1980. Better than the Canadians. They are the franchise. All right? So all these fucking assholes go out there and they see Jack Nicholas, a, uh, a fucking true fan. Jack Nicholson. What the fuck is wrong with me? Every time I want to say Jack Nicholas, I say Nicholson and vice versa there. God help me if they're ever in the same fucking room. Really, Bill? When the fuck would that happen? Huh? When you do some corporate gig for some people who actually did something with their life and you go in there like a dancing monkey and then afterwards try to talk to them in the green room as they're clearly blowing you off. Um, <clears throat> anyways, the fuck am I talking about here? Yeah, all those douchebag Laker fans. You know, I talked to one the other day like, oh, dude, I'm diehard. I'm diehard. And I found out he was from New York. How the fuck do you go from being a Knicks fan to being a Lakers fan? I'll tell you why. You become a fucking phony. How do you leave New York and move to L.A.? How do you do that? You know, unless you're in show business, which was he? I think he was. I can't remember. I drank so much this fucking week. Everybody's just amalgam. Everybody's just a big, just amalgamating, if that's even a word, into just one big face. 